born for battle designed to dominate. This jet is unforgiving and unfailing. We're talking about America's newest fighter jet, the F-47. At its heart lies an engine that carries the weight of victory. Its blades can outrun bullets and its heat is capable of melting stone. But how was an engine this ruthless created? Let's begin. Every jet engine begins with a core, the backbone that holds everything else together. For the F-47's power plant, that starts in a foundry where superalloys are melted at more than 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. These alloys contain nickel, cobalt, and rhenium that survive brutal temperatures. Molten metal is poured into ceramic molds under vacuum conditions to prevent contamination and then cooled. Inside lies the foundation of compressors, combustors, and turbines. The casting must be flawless. Even a microscopic crack could expand into catastrophic failure at 20,000 RPM. Inspectors use X-rays and ultrasound to find imperfections invisible to the eye. Only a handful of castings survive this scrutiny. Those that do become the skeleton of America's newest fighter jet engine. Once the raw casting is secured, it enters precision machining bays where CNC mills carve surfaces with tolerances thinner than a human hair. Air passages, oil channels, and cooling ducts are drilled exactly with precision. Any deviation could cause imbalance and catastrophic failure at 20,000 RPM. Afterward, chemical treatments polish away microscopic imperfections. Inspectors log every cut, hole, and finish surface in digital records. Weeks of work transform crude alloy into the backbone of the F-47's engine. But one component ahead costs more than a luxury car? Which one? Drop your guesses in the comments and we'll come back to it. The blades inside the turbine endure temperatures hotter than the surface of a volcano. Each F-47 turbine blade is grown as a single crystal of nickel alloy using a process called directional solidification. No grain boundaries, no weak points. Each turbine blade is a single crystal of alloy, hollowed with cooling passages and drilled with microscopic holes that breathe protective air. Ceramic coatings shield them from volcanic heat. They cost more than luxury cars, but without them, the engine melts in seconds. With them, it becomes unstoppable. Turbine blades take compressed air and mix it with fuel, igniting it into controlled fire. For the F-47 engine, engineers use an annular combustor lined with heat-resistant alloys and ceramic coatings. Inside, temperatures can soar above 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit, but the walls must survive for thousands of hours. To achieve this, the combustor is riddled with cooling holes to form protective airflow patterns. The fuel injectors are engineered to atomize jet fuel into a fine mist that burns evenly without hot spots. Combustors are tested separately before installation. Any irregular flame pattern could destabilize the engine. Before fuel can burn, air must be crushed to extreme density with the high-pressure compressor. In the F-47, it uses multiple titanium and nickel stages, each blade curved with microscopic precision. Everyone is milled from billets and balanced to fractions of a gram. Any imbalance at 15,000 RPM could tear the engine apart. Assemblers mount hundreds onto rotating disks, forming what looks like a metallic sunflower. Bearings and seals ensure smooth rotation under massive stress. The result multiplies air pressure over 20 times. The high-pressure turbine is where energy is stolen from fire. It sits directly behind the combustor, enduring the hottest gases. Blades here spin at astonishing speeds, driving the high-pressure compressor upstream through a connecting shaft. Manufacturing requires extreme balance. Each turbine disc must withstand centrifugal forces equal to hundreds of tons. Engineers use electron beam welding to join blade roots to discs with flawless strength. Advanced coatings protect against oxidation, while internal cooling channels keep temperatures just below the metal's melting point. Every turbine stage is balanced individually before being joined together. During testing, lasers measure vibration patterns to confirm stability. The low-pressure turbine and fan are most visible from outside the jet. In the F-47 engine, this fan spans nearly 10 feet, pulling in massive volumes of air. Its blades are forged from carbon fiber composites with titanium leading edges, combining strength with lightness. The low-pressure turbine drives this giant fan, extracting energy from exhaust gases. Manufacturing the fan blades is a delicate process of layering composites and molds, baking them under high pressure and bonding them to metallic roots. 
Each blade is tested for resonance and vibration, ensuring silence at cruising speeds and strength during combat maneuvers. The fan creates thrust and shields the engine core by moving cooler air around it, reducing infrared signature. On the F-47, this system channels rotation from the low-pressure shaft to generators, hydraulic pumps, and oil systems. Manufacturing involves hardened steel gears cut with micron precision. Any imperfection in tooth geometry can cause vibration and catastrophic wear. The housing is milled from titanium alloy, chosen for strength. Inside, gears are coated with advanced lubricants to minimize friction. During assembly, technicians measure backlash, the microscopic clearance between gear teeth, to ensure perfect engagement. Once complete, the gearbox becomes the unseen lifeline of the fighter jet. Without it, there'd be no hydraulics, no avionics, and certainly no power. To keep the F-47 engine alive, it relies on a vast circulatory system of oil and cooling air. Oil is pumped at high pressure through bearings and seals, reducing friction and carrying away heat. Simultaneously, air bled from compressors flows through tiny drilled passages in blades and combustor walls, forming a protective layer. Manufacturing these networks requires drilling microscopic channels with lasers, then testing each for leaks under pressure. The oil system uses advanced synthetic lubricants, capable of surviving heat that would destroy ordinary fluids. Sensors monitor flow in real time, ready to trigger shutdowns if circulation falters. Raw metal cannot survive the inferno of a jet engine alone. That's why the F-47's internals are armored with coatings and ceramics. Turbine blades receive thermal barrier coatings with plasma guns. These coatings insulate the metal beneath, lowering surface temperature by hundreds of degrees. Combustor liners are clad in similar ceramics, resisting oxidation and chemical attack. Even compressor blades receive protective layers against erosion from sand or ice. Each layer must be uniform, bonded perfectly and tested for cracks. Advanced ceramic matrix composites are also introduced in select parts, combining heat resistance with lightweight strength. Technicians work in climate-controlled halls where even dust is considered a threat. Shafts are aligned with lasers. Bearings are installed with micrometer tools. Torque wrenches click with mathematical precision. Every connection is logged, every fastener checked twice. Teams of specialists oversee separate modules before joining them into one complete power plant. The final assembly of an F-47 engine takes weeks, involving thousands of steps and endless inspections. When complete, the engine is no longer a pile of parts. It is a living machine, ready to roar. But before it earns its place under a fighter's wing, it must face trials as brutal as combat itself. No engine leaves unproven. The F-47's power plant is strapped to test stands and runs through brutal cycles. Throttled from idle to maximum, every weakness is exposed. Sensors track heat, vibration, and pressure. Some engines are pushed until they fail. Others endure hundreds of hours. Only those that survive earn clearance. Testing is violent, but it creates certainty that when a pilot demands power, the engine will respond. After testing, engines are shipped to assembly plants where F-47 fighters await. Cranes lower it into place, aligning mounts with millimetric accuracy. Connections for fuel, hydraulics, and electronics are secured. Technicians run system checks, confirming that pumps spin freely, oil circulates, and sensors report true. The integration process can take days. Once complete, its fuselage is given life by the heart of its engine. But even then, the work isn't done. Only after passing these trials will the aircraft be cleared for its first flight. Engines define fighters. Without the Merlin, the Mustang was just metal. Without the F-100, the F-16 would never rule the skies. Without the F-47's power plant, America's newest jet would sit silent. This engine delivers thrust with efficiency, endurance with reliability. Forged from decades of research and combat lessons, it survives fire and pressure. In tomorrow's skies, it isn't just technology, it's America's promise to win. The F-47's heart is proof of what engineering can achieve. Built with precision and tested with violence, this engine might just define the next war. And that mystery part that's worth more than a luxury car? It's the turbine blade. Open the Horton HO229 and the future stares back. No pistons, no propellers, only two Jumo 004 turbojets. They did not spin, they roared. 
They swallowed air, lit it on fire, and spat it out as pure power of nearly 4,000 pounds, enough to push a bomber past 600 miles per hour. By the early 1940s, Germany's Luftwaffe was losing the skies it once dominated. At the start of the war, it had shocked the world with fast modern aircraft like the BF-109 fighter and Ju-87 Stuka dive bomber. But by 1943, the situation had changed. Allied bombers arrived in massive formations, shielded by long-range escorts like the P-51 Mustang. Germany's piston engine fighters were outnumbered, and even when they fought bravely, they could no longer tip the balance. The Luftwaffe needed a miracle. Its leaders turned to new technology, specifically jets. The Messerschmitt Me-262, the world's first operational jet fighter, had already shown what was possible. But the Air Ministry wanted more than a fast interceptor. They needed a bomber that could carry weapons and still outrun anything in the air. Enter the Horton brothers. Remar Horton, the visionary designer, and Walter Horton, the pilot, believed the answer was simplicity. Build an aircraft that was all wing, no fuselage, no tail. Less drag meant more speed. Less weight meant less fuel, and fewer materials meant easier construction. But speed alone wasn't enough. The Hortens knew the age of the propeller was over. To survive, their aircraft had to embrace jet power. What they created was the Horton H0229, a radical flying wing jet bomber. But it never advanced beyond the prototype stage, leaving its promise untested in real combat. Horton selected the Jumo 004 turbojet, the same engine used in the Messerschmitt Me-262, the world's first jet fighter. To understand its importance, let's break it down simply. A turbojet works by sucking in the air through the front and squeezing it in a spinning compressor. This air is then mixed with fuel and ignited. The explosion creates scorching gases that rush backward, spinning a turbine on their way out to keep the compressor turning. The rest of the gases blast through the nozzle to create thrust. What made this so revolutionary compared to piston engines? Propeller aircraft lose efficiency at high speeds because the propeller blades themselves drag against the air. Jet engines remove the propeller entirely, delivering smoother power and far higher top speeds. They also allowed rapid climbs that piston fighters struggled to match. In essence, jets unlocked a whole new flight regime. The Jumo 004 wasn't huge by modern standards. Each one produced about 1,980 pounds of thrust. But with two buried inside the HO-229's body, the aircraft could approach 600 miles per hour, almost 150 faster than the P-51 Mustang, the Allies' best fighter. For 1944, that was astonishing. A flying wing with jet power gave the HO-229 a profile unlike anything else in the war. It looked alien, sounded terrifying, and it promised to outrun anything that tried to catch it. Here's a question. If the H0229 had been built in numbers, could it have outrun Allied fighters and changed the bombing aircrafts? Drop your guesses in the comments and we'll come back to that at the end. For all its brilliance, the Jumo 004 was fragile. Germany lacked the rare metals like nickel and cobalt needed for heat-resistant alloys. As a result, the turbine blades were made of cheap steel. They cracked and warped under heat. Most engines failed after only 20 to 25 hours of use. This reliability issue was worsened by Allied bombings on production factories, forcing engineers to cut corners in production. Engines left the assembly line with inconsistent quality and pilots often went up in the air, unsure how long their power plants would last. Fuel was another problem. The Jumo devoured nearly 1.25 liters of kerosene every second at full power, draining its tanks quickly and limiting the HO229's range to about 600 miles. That was enough for defensive interception, but not enough to strike far into Allied territory. Pilots also had to treat the throttle gently. A sudden push could stall or even destroy the engine, a risk that caught out many inexperienced flyers. Despite its flaws, it pushed aircrafts into an entirely new age. The Hortens didn't simply bolt the engines under the wings like the ME-262. Instead, they buried them deep inside the fuselage. This gave the H0229 a smooth, clean profile with less drag and more speed. But this integration came with complications. Cooling was harder and mechanics struggled with accessibility. Yet aerodynamically, it was a stroke of genius. By hiding the engines inside, the aircraft presented fewer surfaces to radar. Though stealth wasn't an official science yet, the H0229 stumbled into it. 
The airframe itself was just as radical. Aluminum was scarce, so the Hortens built the wings largely from laminated plywood, bonded with charcoal dust and resin. Decades later, tests suggested this material may have absorbed radar waves. That means the H0229 was not just fast, but it may actually have been the world's first stealth bomber. The H0229V2, the second prototype, flew in December 1944. It reportedly reached nearly 497 miles per hour at medium altitude. Faster than any Allied fighter of the time, it seemed to prove the Hortense right. But victory was short-lived. On one test flight, an engine failed. The prototype crashed, killing the pilot. Engine unreliability remained a constant danger. Even so, the aircraft's speed and stability impressed observers. Imagine a bomber carrying 2,000 pounds of bombs and outrunning any escort sent against it. For the Allies, it would have been a nightmare, but time was running out for Germany. Resources dwindled, the war collapsed, and the H0229 never advanced beyond a few incomplete prototypes. The H0229's construction was just as fascinating as its engines. Wood made up most of the aircraft. Laminated plywood panels were glued together with resin that contained charcoal powder. This made it strong and possibly radar absorbent. There were also practical advantages. Wood required less industrial machinery to work with, so small workshops could produce parts. Repairs could be made quickly in the field, using simple tools. In many ways, the H0229's use of wood was as much a clever wartime solution as a technological innovation. Flying a traditional aircraft meant relying on the tail to keep it steady. The H0229 had no tail. Its flying wing design gave it speed and efficiency, but it also made the aircraft far less stable. To manage this, the Hortens built in carefully shaped wing edges and split flaps that doubled as air brakes. These helped the pilot control roll and yaw, which is the side-to-side -side balance of the aircraft. But unlike modern flying wings, the H0229 had no digital computers to smooth things out. Every correction had to be made by the pilot's hands alone. Test flights showed that the design could be flown, but it demanded skill. Small mistakes could send the aircraft wobbling or diving. In the 1940s, the H0229 was pushing the limits of what a human pilot could handle unaided. By spring 1945, Allied troops were closing in on Germany. At the Gotha factory, American forces discovered H0229 prototypes and parts. One was shipped to the United States, where it survives today at the Smithsonian's Udvar Hazy Center. American engineers studied it carefully. They were struck by the clean wood and charcoal construction and the concealed engines. Operation Paperclip brought German jet scientists to the U.S., where their knowledge accelerated jet research. The H0229 never flew in combat, but the fact that it reached prototype stage in the chaos of 1945 was extraordinary. The H0229 was more than a failed experiment. It was a preview of aviation's future, and its integrated engines inspired later stealth concepts. Its flying wing shape was echoed decades later by Northrop's designs, and its plywood structure foreshadowed the composites used in modern stealth aircraft. In the 1980s, when Northrop engineers built replicas to test its radar cross-section, they confirmed that the H0229 was harder to detect than conventional designs. The idea that a prototype from 1944 could already possess stealth-like qualities stunned researchers. The B-2 Spirit stealth bomber, which first flew in the 1980s, looked like a direct descendant of the H0229. Its smooth shape, buried engines, and radar-absorbing skin all mirrored principles pioneered, intentionally or not, by the Hortens. The Jumo 004 also left a mark. Its design influenced early Soviet and American jet engines, launching the world fully into the jet age. So let's return to that question. Could the H0229 have outrun Allied fighters and changed the bombing war? In theory, yes. In reality, no. The engines were unreliable, fuel was scarce, and Germany was collapsing. The H0229 was a vision of the future trapped in the wrong time. But it still remains one of the most remarkable prototypes ever built. A machine that foreshadowed stealth and demonstrated jet power. If you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the engines that shaped history.